Hey guys, it's Troy. I wanted to share with you a couple of new additions to the family, um, both of which are vintage. I'm the kind of guy that I like vintage pens. I also like newer pens. Uh, you probably also know, if you've been watching my channel at all, that I like Esther Brooks and I like Waterman. So today I'm going to talk about an Esther Brook and talk about a Waterman. So let me give you a little bit of a backstory. I was requested uh, by one of my viewers to do a video on how to change the ink sack on a lever filled fountain pen and I figured okay yeah I can do that um, so I don't have I did not at the time have any pens that needed a new sack so I went online just to look to see if I could find one uh, for a fairly decent deal that I wouldn't mind having in my collection and I uh, kind of gravitated towards an Estherbrook because those are popular and they're fairly inexpensive and a lot of collectors uh, start out with Estherbrooks when they look at vintage pens and for lever fillers. So um, went on eBay and um, you know I've shown you several times that I have sitting here at my desk. I'm going to grab it right here. There's, there's that I'm going to grab and then there's this. This uh, is an Estherbrook 8 ball. It's so called because of the base. Uh, and then you've got the fountain pen like this. It's a desk set. So uh, you have no cap to, that goes on this. It just simply sits right inside the eight ball. So I've had one of these on my desk for a long time. For the longest time I had just this one here, all black. Um, and I went ahead and ordered a second one. And uh, this one sat in my, my drawer for quite a while. And when I had to refill this one the last time, I just set it aside and said, all right, I'll just dig out the one with the uh, the clear acrylic tip, and I'll use it. So this sits on my desk at all times. It's a pretty good writer, and I'm right happy with it. It's uh, fairly, um, you know, it's fairly re reliable. I don't know as though I like the ink uh, that I filled it with, uh, so I think I'm going to change back to the inks that I had been using it. They seem to last longer. But uh, so I, I started looking, and I said, hmm. Just for grins, you know, um, once I hit a thousand subscribers or so, uh, I was thinking about doing another giveaway. So I said, yeah, let's see, because I've had such good success <laughs> with them, I might get one of these. So um, don't know if I'm going to use that for a giveaway or not. Otherwise, i got another one sitting here on my desk, or if I want to give one as a gift to somebody, whatever. So I got a second one, and I knew that I would probably have to restore this one. So I polished up the 8-ball itself. I mean, it looks really nice now compared to what it was. It was fairly dull, um, fairly uh, grungy, did a lot of cleanup on it. And the pen itself did a lot of cleanup on it, did some polishing on it. Uh, and the other thing that I did is I recorded how to change an ink sack with a process on this particular pen. Well, during the course of taping, the battery died on my camcorder and I lost a lot of uh, footage I thought maybe I could just pick up at a certain spot that I made it to it actually stopped recording prior to the point where the camera shut off so I lost a good amount of footage so I just punted everything I said forget it I'll do this again some other time uh, so anyway I went ahead and restored this one to its former glory um, it's got a new ink sack on it. It's got a firm fine nib on it, which I'm not a real big fan of the finer nibs. But this one actually writes pretty good. I mean, it's it's stiff, um, and but it writes nicely, so I can't complain too much of that. So, uh, replace the ink sack on it. Works great. So I've got another Esterbrook um, vintage lever filler pen, probably from the 1940s, that now resides on my desk for the moment. And I think I filled that up with a, a Pelican uh, 4001 Royal Blue. So, um, you know that I like Waterman's. A little bit of a backstory here as well. Um, you know, I'd already had a Waterman 32V that I'd shared on a previous uh, video. I also have a Waterman 52V. You know, little vest. The V stands for vest, so you know, in a suit, you could sit, sit in your pocket. From 30s and 40s, those were some of the designations, lever fillers. The ink sack on that one was good. The 32V, the ink sack was still pretty good on it. And I had actually thought about with this one here, is the latest, which is when I bought it, 
there was no designation uh, from the seller as to what kind it was. Um, but considering the, the length, the dimensions of it that was given, I said, okay, it's probably another V model. Uh, it's different from the others. Got a different style clip. It is also a lever filler. And just look at the colors on this thing. Very different, very nice, very sweet. But I figure it's probably a 32 because it's a celluloid and it's got a number two Waterman nib on it. So I'm assuming it's a 32V. It's also the same height as the other 32V that I've got. Uh, the clip's different, you know, the trim is different, um, but there is no imprint on it. There is an imprint on this one as to its model number. There is no imprint on this one as to its model number. There's no imprint anywhere else except, you know, you've got the standard, you know, Waterman's uh, print right there in the barrel and on the nib you've got the the waterman's uh, information you probably can't see that very well but anyway um, I was gonna go redo my video because this one arrived after the the Esterbrook I was gonna do the resacking video on this one uh, but uh, you know when this one arrived I was in one of those moods of I just want to get something accomplished so I feel like I've accomplished something you know, a little bit frustrated with some other things so I just set everything aside and I worked on this um, and it looks very bright brilliant shiny now it wasn't all that when I first got it uh, although it was still in really good condition so you know I cleaned it up I polished it up um, I uh, knocked out the the nib um, in the feed cleaned it all up polished it up nice and neat put it back together put on the new ink sack really did a I think a decent job polishing up the body itself so it's nice and shiny and you can see the light just reflecting off from it so uh, I was pretty happy with how this thing turned out all that uh, metal that you're seeing there that's nice and shiny now granted my fingerprints are on it but all this was very dull colored and I got that nice and shiny now by comparison to what it was got a nice imprint uh, for the Waterman's logo and all um, the the lever was kinda dull I kinda brought that back to life I'm no, I'm no Steph Jackson uh, <laughs> Steph does great work uh, but um, you know this is just me doing it to one of my own um, just trying to bring it back to life and actually it writes very nicely so uh, it's got a nice flexible nib and kind of impress and I filled this one up um, with a uh, Robert Oster uh, fire and ice and actually when I posted a picture of this as my pen of the day I was asked by somebody uh, am I worried about not being able to clean that ink out of the ink sack and quite honestly no um, I haven't had any issue uh, with Robert Oster inks being able to clean up uh, I use, I've used a good many different kinds of inks. Um, one of the things that, like the Esterbrooks that I like, you can clean these, one out, these ones out really easily because these nibs, they just twist right out, you know, just like that. And if you've got a blunt tip syringe, you can just, you know, flush it out with water and these probably get the cleanest of any out there for, uh, for an ink sack and a lever filler. Now, this one here with the Robert Oster ink in it, that's going to take a little more cleaning. These, I, I don't hesitate to put something like a Noodler's ink in these. Um, I've used some uh, Noodler's, uh, not hard, well, not hard of darkness, but there's a um, there's a, another black ink that I've used by Noodler's that I've got a bottle of up here that I used to use. I've used some Birmingham ink in, in one of these. They work fine, but I've never had a problem with any Robert Oster ink in any of the pens that I've got. So some Noodler's inks are tough to clean, um, but Robert Oster not so much. I'll find out when I go to flush this one out uh, when it comes to it, it, uh, its end as to whether I refill it or whether I just flush it and, and set it aside for a while. Uh, but uh, if anybody else has had problems with Robert Oster inks, uh, feel free to comment below um, and tell us your experiences with it because I'd love to hear from other folks. I mean, I, I've tried a good many Robert Oster inks so far and I haven't had any issues with them on anything. So we'll find out how that goes. But um, anyway, those are my, my two vintage 
acquisitions. Um, this is probably from like the 1930s or so, maybe into the 40s. And this is uh, the eight ball set is probably in the 1940s or so. Both of which have been fairly, if, if I do say so myself, fairly nicely restored. But then again, both of them were both in fairly good condition when I got them. So um, this one writes really, really well. And one of the things with a flexi nib um, and it being that small, um, it didn't write well for my wife when she tried it out. And I, so she said, no, it's not writing at all. So I pick it up. Oh, what do you mean? It's writing perfectly for me. Works just fine. Uh, so I've been using this um, yesterday since I've restored it uh, in today. So I'm quite happy with that. So uh, another baby to add to the Waterman's family. And, you know, like I said, these are all V's. Not that I'm, I'm essentially fond of the smaller Waterman uh, pocket size, vest size uh, pens. Uh, it just happened to work out that way with ones that I've been able to find. Now, a little backstory on this. And this is where I was, was going to throw this out. Um, it's one of those horror stories that you go, <gasps> what have I done? Um, I was bidding on this on eBay, okay? And it got to the point where yeah, I was right towards the end of what I was willing to pay. So about 50 bucks or so, and I said, you yeah, know, I'll stretch it a little bit. You know, okay, fine, maybe 50 bucks. So here it is at $50 or so, and I had my phone, and I had the app on my phone, and uh, so I just happened to be looking through um, eBay and oh okay I only got a couple minutes left on this particular auction so let me take a look as I'm watching boop outbid okay it's like 50 and some change uh, or or maybe you know close to it okay so I said all right it's only a few seconds left so let's put in 51 and if I get it I get it if I don't I don't um, well <laughs> on the phone app um, I neglected to put in the decimal point. So instead of 51.00, I put in 5100, enter. And then when it popped up, $5,100 bid, I'm like, holy crap, what have I done? <laughs> so I guess I was going to win that auction one way or another. I certainly didn't plan on bidding now $5,100, but at, uh, you know, I got it for less than 51, put it that way. You know, so uh, <laughs> it was one of those. <laughs> so I got the bid in in the last couple of seconds for a 5100 <laughs> and it cost me less than 51 so oh boy anyway just a just a funny story on that all right that's about it thanks for watching uh, maybe you got a couple more ideas for you to add to your collection um, I really do like Estherbrook desk sets they're really convenient to use they write well if you got the good nib I like how many nibs are available for Estherbrooks which is one of the reasons I have a good many of them but the desk set is probably my all-time favorite Estherbrook. It sits here, and I use it constantly. So now I've got two. I've got one that writes black, one that writes blue, um, and uh, added yet another uh, 52V. And I really, really like the color on, on this particular uh, celluloid little pen. So, alrighty, Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.